marriage. So they can't, by the way, a gross violation of any human rights code because they're not allowed to fall in love and have officially and, and, and raise a family. You're also saying conceivably you could consider yourself Jewish, spend your life as Jewish, come to this country and say, find out you're not. You're not. <laughs> that, absolutely. Not pleasant. Uh, uh, anyway, so, uh, so look, they have two choices. Either they don't fall in love or they fall in love and live together, but they don't get married. And therefore, what you have now is that in every single area where there are religious restrictions, Israelis have found openings for freedom. The number of people that live together in common law arrangements, and by the way, receive according to Israeli law rights, is growing daily. Is that also because of neglect by the authorities, or because the authorities are purposely saying, no, okay, let's give some freedom? No, it, it, the, it's be, because there's no legal answer and therefore there are openings. Same thing about Shabbat. There is no public transportation in Shabbat except in Haifa. But on the other hand, some of the major shopping centers in the country are open. What I'm saying is, gradually, there is a gap developing. The way people live and the laws they live under, and one day, the legislators are going to have to close that gap. The law must reflect the freedom and the open way that many Israelis live in. Gershom, on the other hand, within that freedom and that openness, do you sense that there is any movement among Jews, I assume that's the community with which you're most familiar, back towards religion? I hear about secular Jews attending yeshivas, and it astounds me. What's happening? Are people somehow wanting to grab onto some part of this rather than throwing it all out with the wash water? I want to relate to a question you asked before about Jewish values mm -hmm. in order to answer that. If you study in a traditional framework, if you study the page of Torah, it's printed in a way that there's the text of the Torah and all around it disagreeing opinions. And this, is, this follows McLuhan's rule. The medium is the message. Judaism is disagreement. It's disagreement about the most basic things, and that's the most basic way of studying Jewishness. The stereotype of Jews arguing has a basis, a cultural basis, and a positive one. And so part of what I would define a Jewish state as being is a place where Jews can argue about these issues freely, without having to look over their shoulder at the majority, and at the same time where they can give the minority, where they need the minority, the non-Jewish minority, to be there to see things differently, just as Jews so often do in other countries. The reality of having people who are living in both cultures is essential for the questions and the arguments that they'll raise. To choose to be open-minded. It's absolutely understandable and positive and good that there are Jews who are looking into Judaism outside the frameworks of established religion because we have to make a distinction here between uh, religion and clerical parties, uh, uh, institutional groups that are there to give power to specific religious people on the basis of a religious ideology, but that reflects a very narrow segment of religion. My argument would be, however, that to the to whatever extent we can reduce the power of clerical organizations, we will actually increase the interest that Jews have in their religion. We're almost out of time, so with the help of Irene from Philadelphia, I'm going to ask one last question, and I ask all of you to jump on or jump in on this until someone makes this sign at me and says, we're off the air. Okay, here's the question. She asks, what can Reform and Conservative Jews in the U.S. do to help achieve recognition for liberal Judaism in Israel, and how do we influence the situation without being interfering diaspora Jews? And I would like to add to that uh, a, a tilt of my own. Is the kind of coexistence between secularism and religiosity, between Jew and Arab, that we're talking about, hoping for, wishing for here, in the realm of possibility, or is it really in the realm of fantasy? Who wants to go first? Well, it's certainly a possibility. I think the only question is how long will it take? There is no one key that if you turn will change the situation overnight. It'll take a number of dimensions, a number of directions coming together. A, 
a question as to what can reform and conservative Jews do. A, support us, build on the ground. More schools, more synagogues, here more youth work here in Israel, more advocacy work. Two, do not fall into the trap that many well-wishers who want to maintain the status quo and things as they are suggest you are interfering. You are not interfering. The reality and the good news is the majority of Israelis share our values. They want to see the promises of the Declaration of Independence realized. They do not buy into the status quo. They do not buy into religious coercion. So this isn't about interfering. This is about a global Jewish partnership to bring Israel back to its dream, back to its vision. Jaffa, are you that optimistic? optimistic? I'm, I'm optimistic because finally this state will become normal. You know how? They will come to practice their freedoms in the Arab neighborhoods and in the Arab area. Because the only way that uh, Jews is practicing their freedoms, in Saturdays, for example, they come to Wadi Nisnaz, they come to the East Jerusalem, they to Yaffa. They go to Shfayim. Yeah, they go to Shfayim, but, but, but when the Russians Jerusalem. want to have pork and they, are, they can't have it, they come to the, Arab, uh, to the Christian uh, part of, of Haifa. So this is the way... Culinary that, coexistence. Uh, not, not... Look, to be normal in this place means, first, to strengthen democracy, and second, that each one of us can live in his way. Gershom, final thought from you? Uh, I think that when I was a child in the United States, the idea that a black person would be a realistic candidate for president was even stranger than the possibility that there would be religious freedom in Israel. So I once have, we will have Arab candidates. I, absolutely. <laughs> I do not think that the people who look at things in a six-week uh, range and say, oh, we'll never get there, are being uh, politically defeatist. You have to take a view of a steady struggle for these things. Last word, no me. It's perfectly okay to disagree. That's what being Jewish is. That's what being democratic is. I think it's terrific. If there could be an African-American president in the United States, one day there'll be a woman president as well. <laughs> uh -huh. Maybe a female Muslim president of Israel. Who knows? <laughs> Thank Actually, you. That's not... Uh, possible under Israeli law. Ah, okay, well we'll have to deal with that Female. in the next town meeting no, because this one, ladies and president. gentlemen, is at an end. Let me thank you all of you for joining us today. Gershom yeah. Gorenberg, Jafar Farah, Rabbi Uri Regev, Nomi Khazan, talking a little bit about the problems we face, the challenges we address, and some of the hope that we have for solutions. Let me thank all of you for joining us for this new Israel Fund sponsored town meeting. We're at an end now. I'd like to thank all of you for being here, and I'd like to invite you, first of all, to join us for the next one. We don't know when yet, but there will be more. And to tell you that if you'd like to go on with this conversation, this discussion, this dialogue, you can do so by joining the blog on the NIF website. It's on their homepage. There's something there that says blog. So blog away, enjoy yourselves, and we'll see you again soon. Good night. Good night from here. Hello. <laughs>